What's this? New year, new backdrop. Same old me, sorry. I'm Kat and I play Red. What if all those crazy stories were true and it was actually aliens that helped forge our culture and civilization? Well, if it was, it might look a little something like this. Origins First Builders is designed by Adam Kwapinski and published by Borden Dice. Let's have a look at how it plays. Origins First Builders is a mid-weight dice placement game that will have you managing workers, building your city and vying for military control on the military track here. Now at the start of the game, these bonus action tiles are placed randomly and these motherships just click into the appropriate slot and are set to one. The zodiac tracks here are also random. There are 12 tiles and you just randomly pick three and place the corresponding card underneath. You will start with a player board, two available workers and your Archon, and then four player bases that you'll have to pay food for to gain throughout the course of the game. You'll also have two starting tiles that represent the start of your city. These are the same for all players. In your turn, you can choose to do one of five different actions. You can visit an encounter site with your workers. So, choose one of your workers, place it on the encounter site. You can actually place at any of these, but we'll explain why the colour match is good in a bit. They've got unlimited space, so even if someone else is there, I can place there. If I already had a worker, I could also place there again. As I said, the dials start at one, but once you place a worker there and activate it, this dial will increase, in this case, to a two. If you place an Archon on any of these spots, you can ignore the number. However, we're placing a dice here, so the value must be at least equal to or higher than the one on the wheel. So we started at one, that's two, that's fine. However, if this was a three and I wanted to place there, I could pay one wisdom to essentially bump this up to three for the turn. But it's not, it was at one, it's gonna to go to a two, and my dice is okay. You're then gonna select one of the two actions shown at the top here. So in this case, I'd gain three wisdom. Uh, here, I can pay a stone to go up the zodiac track. If the dice color also matches the spot, so red, red, in this case, it's a match, I can do the bonus action on the bonus tile. So let's have a quick look at these actions and see what they do. Along the top here, for every color, it's kind of like a basic grab resources action. There are three primary resources in the game, stone, food, and wisdom. And there's also gold, which is a special resource. So here you'd get one of each. Here, one of your choice and a gold, three wisdom, free food, free stone. Simple. On the blue, well, what's currently the blue spot, we get to do a military action. So if I were to go here, I can move up the military track and do an attack. Now, an attack will give you the ability to do the action on the spot you're on, and you'd also get one point for every player behind you and every area behind you. I'd also go past this spot here 
and get one of these superiority tokens. Now, these allow me to do an extra action immediately. So basically I could do two actions in a row by giving up one of these tokens. So that's the military track. The yellow dial here lets us build. Now, we always have the choice of one of each colour building. These are done randomly at the start of the game. So, the cost of the buildings is the amount of wisdom shown here and the amount of stone shown there. You can always decide to take one of these tiles and turn it into a farm. Farms cost you nothing. You can pop them in your city and there are various other tiles that work in combination with the farms but that's not what I want now so I'm going to pop that back. Here I have the option to pay a stone, go up two on one of the zodiac tracks and take the card at the top of the track. So if I decided to do this I'd go up two there and I'd take this Libra card. If another player had the card, I'd get to take it off of them, which is a bit mean, so I wouldn't really do that, honest. The orange actions here, take a resource of your choice and take gold, and this will allow you to take one of the dice, the coloured dice from the board here, paying the amount of wisdom shown. However, to do that, I actually need a population base for you to pop them in. At the moment, I don't because I've got to pay for them. And lastly, the purple track, dial, purple dial, allows you to pay wheat to either increase the value of a die or to go up the military track. So have a quick look at these bonus actions. Some are fairly obvious, but the blue one here, you can pay a stone to go up one on those zodiac tracks. Resource of your choice, but not gold. Pay a wisdom to either move up the military track or attack. Take one of the white speaker dice, which we'll come back to in two seconds. Um, and the pub one here allows you to pay a food to build. Now, these white dice, um, this is set up for two players, so we have two available. And you can just take one of them and pop it in your player area. You don't need to have a player base for them to go on. Um, you don't own them, they go back at the end of the game, but it kind of gives you an extra action for the round. So those speaker dice are quite cool. So, that is visiting an encounter site. You can close a district. Now, if I've built some stuff, um, do, do, do. let's have a look. This is also kind of going back to the building. I can close a district. Now, to close a district, I need to have four tiles and space in the middle for a dice. And what I would have to do is take one of my dice off my board here from the population tray and pop it there. Now, if the colour of the die matches any of the tiles, you're going to get to do those actions. So here, I gain two VP for each of my yellow buildings. So that would give me four points. One stone plus one stone for each empty adjacent space so that would get me free stone now when you place a building you get the benefit of it at the time this just activates it for a second time which is kind of cool after you've placed your dice you need to check the district cards over this side of the board so the district cards here are chosen at random at the start of the game and if I'd got this pattern, um, if I had a red and two blue, when I closed the district, I could claim these coins and these points. I'd turn the card sideways and anyone else who got that after me would get the seven points at the end there. 
So, but I've got two yellow, so I don't get anything for that. The other thing to note with your seat of power dice when you close the district is these are going to score you points at the end of the game. You're going to get points for the number of pips on your dice there multiplied by the height of the matching tower. So popping that four there would currently give me four points. However, if I get a second one over the course of the game, that would gain me eight points. But I don't have that. I don't have that. And I don't have these for now. The third action you can do is build a tower. Now I've briefly touched on why these are important. But what you can do is select one of the available towers and pay gold to place them on your board. Now you need to pay an amount of gold equal to how tall your tower currently is. So in this case, any would cost me one because I only have one. So I can pay one gold and pop that on there. Simple, really. The next action you can do is to grow your population. You're going to simply pay the amount of food shown at the top. So the first one here is two, so I'd pay two food and I gain this population base. And it goes up there ready for me to put a dice into. If you manage to buy all four of these bases, you'll get 10 points at the end of the game. The last available action is to pass. Each player has these little handy cheat sheets that basically tell you what I just told you. Um, so if you pass, you're just going to flip that over. You're then going to take your workers off the board. Um, pop in there. So take my Archon back first. And then I'm going to take my dice back. The first thing I'm going to do is increase their value. So my blue becomes five and my red is going to become a three. And they go back onto my board. Now, if my blue dice had been at a six and I couldn't increase it anymore, it will go down here and become an advisor. I'd gain one point for that. My Archon who was colourless to begin with, now counts as blue. So if I had, um, let's have a look, if I had, whoops, these dice here, my Archon would actually count as blue, yellow and orange for the sake of getting those bonus actions when I placed him. Once all players have passed, the round will end. Any speaker dice that have been taken by people and used will go back to the pool, but their value will increase. Now, these only actually go up to five. So if this was at five and I couldn't place it, um, I'd roll it and pop it back there. The first player marker goes to the player who is furthest along on the military track. Then, let's say my marker was here then all markers will go back to the first space of the current district they're in you're then going to distribute the zodiac cards now the player who is highest up on each of these three tracks would get the appropriate cards these have all got basically fancy rule breaking abilities. So they're worth getting. Then you're gonna check for the game end. So your game end triggers happen if one player is at the top of all three Zodiac tracks. Never had that happen. If all the gold has been taken off of these, so if someone has activated this 12 point bonus on all three of these, the game will end. If there are three or fewer colors of tower discs available, or if there's no more 
citizen dice left to put in the pool. Now, earlier I took a yellow dice off of here, so what I should have done was move these down, roll and pop that there. So there's always one dice of every colour in the pool here. So if you can't place a specific colour, the round will end. So now we've had a look at the actions, let's just do a couple of turns. That was actually on two, so it doesn't matter too much. What I'm going to do, let's have a look. I'm going to place a blue die. I'm going to take the free stone because early game and you need resources. I put these slightly too far out of my reach. I'm going to take free stone. I'm not going to worry about the military jack yet because I place there, that goes up to two. Because my dice matches the colour, I'm going to pay one stone, one of those stones I just got, to go up one of the Zodiac tracks. So which one do I want? Um, every time you close the district, take a citizen. Oh, so I'm going to go up one on the forest track, or the Libra track. I am then I want to build a building because I want to show you guys how that works. So I'm going to put my arc on there and I'm going to take this build action. So I've already gone up on the Zodiac track. I'm going to go up again. I'm going to take this statue, which is going to cost me one wisdom and one stone. Pop those into the supply. Take that. Now this says advance one step on the chosen temple track now because of endgame scoring i want to keep these kind of at the same level so i'm just going to go up one on the mountain track and then i'm going to place that statue into my little township here so pop that there then my final worker the red worker and i always find in this game that I run low on wisdom so I'm actually going to go there oh I didn't turn the dial up there turn this dial up and take three wisdom even though I'm going up those tracks I want the wisdom and we can all make jokes about how I need wisdom um but I'm then going to pay oh no oh I can't pay that I need to pay this I'm going to pay one wisdom and I can either move up the military track or I can attack. This stage in the game, I'm just going to move up one. I get this superiority token and pop that into my area. Now, at this point, I can choose to do one of the other available actions. So I can't close the district. I don't have any gold to build a tower. And I need two food to grow my population, which I don't have. So my only option is to pass. I'm going to take my Archon back first because that's the easy one. This blue dice is going to go up to a five and go back there. This is going to go to a three and come back here. And that's me out for the round up. I need to restock these buildings, so push those up and pop that one down there. That's how easy a round is. Um, the actions themselves are quite simple. Sometimes you just need resources, so you just have to go on a spot, get resources, and your decision's made for you. So while the rounds themselves and the actions are quite simple, the strategy is not, and that's what we like in a game. So we can see my blue is at a five. Now, once it kind of goes past six, it's going to drop down there. But I'm going to want to put it here because I've got a blue building here. And if we go back to these cards, um, we've got two blue there, two blue. So I can start working on one of these two to get that hefty 12 points and the two gold coins because gold is quite hard to come by so 
Um, I'm going to want a blue building before this gets to six. Um, the one advantage is if this is at a six, if I pop that there as a worker dice, I'd actually get to do both of these grey actions along with the bonus action. So it can be really advantageous to have your sixes on the board. However, you do also want them in. Oops, let's make that proper. Um, you do want them in here because you want those tasty endgame points. So, say, the actions are simple, the ideas are simple, but there's a lot going on strategy-wise with this. And we do like that. So, let's just have a quick look. Um, if I want another blue building, I'm going to need some more wisdom. Which comes from the yellow, uh, not yellow, red, sorry. So, do you know, go back to that red spot, turn the dial, take free wisdom. And I can actually afford to spend one to move up that track. Because don't forget, this is also what determines first place. And then I am going to, oh, oh I want to build, oh. I'm going to place that there. I'm going to take three stone and I'm then going to pay one stone to go up another one of those zodiac tracks. I'm going to go up this third one that I haven't gone up. Then I'm going to play my Archon who's going to go here and build. So I want the blue building which will cost me three wisdom, one stone. So now the obelisk will give you points for having obelisks. So initially it's not going to be worth a lot of points, but don't forget you score them again when you close the districts. So I'm going to take that, pop that there, and it will give me one point. Woo, look at me, storming into the lead. So then if I pass, I take my Archon back, my blue becomes, oh, I didn't check. Have I got enough? No, I haven't got enough wheat for that extra population base. Um, move these. So now at this point, I want to close that before this six is gone forever. So I'd close that district. I'd gain the one point from my obelisk again. I'd advance up the zodiac track. And you can see how the game escalates. At the end of the game, you're going to get one VP for every gold you have left. Unlikely, but possible. So let's say I have two gold and ditch those in. I'm going to get VPs for any dice I have in here. So let's, obviously, these would all be at six. I should do it properly, shouldn't I? Um, I would get six points because that's where my advisor dice are up to. If I'd got all of these population bases out, I'd get the 10 points. You're then going to score any dice in seats of power. So here I'd get six times one because I've only got one tower. Um, if I oh, cheat and just pop that there. That die would get me 12. Um, obviously, if you have multiple dice, you're going to apply the score accordingly. Um, if I had, if this was completed as well, I'd get 11 times 2 and so on. Um, and you're going to do that with all five of the colours. And then the last thing to score is your zodiac tracks. Now, I'm going to just cheat there. There's three tracks, so what you're going to do is actually, I'll pop that there, you're going to ignore your highest value. So that just goes completely, and then you're going to score points for your two lowest tracks. So seven on each, that would give me 14 points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. Origins, first builders, looks like there's a lot going on. But really, when you break it down, it's not so bad. It's not quite as terrifying as you may think. Um, as I said earlier, sometimes you just need to go on a spot and get resources because that's all you can do. Um, 
at which point you got one less decision to make um, the tower bonus cards give you an idea of direction sometimes I, I have one game where I just kept picking up obel obelisks obelisks wobelisks um, obelisks at which point my decision for the game was partly made because I concentrated on them because when you have a lot you can score big points there's a lot but we like it we like it a lot my only criticism come from the choice of these colours um, on some places the orange red purple like here it tends to get a bit muddled um, and on a similar point these dials can be quite hard to read um, I know I've seen several people that have painted them that have just put sharpie over the dice and um, pips I think we need to do something like that um, so there's a few questionable design choices um, I'm going to say but overall it's worth persevering because the game is good enough to get past those um, and let's say these little dials um, let's say I've seen some really fancy painted ones I've seen some where people have just marked them with sharpie um, so we need to get onto it and do that with ours really good um really enjoyed this one it's been a pleasant surprise obviously we know board and dice for their tea games um this one kind of came out of nowhere it's a bit of an obscure film theme film it is almost a film isn't it um it's a bit of an obscure theme um we like it it's really good um definitely more midway but not as scary as it looks so that is Origins First Builders, um, available either now or soon, I'm going to say, just hedge my bets, and it depends what country you're in, um, check it out. Thanks for watching this video, hope you enjoyed it, hope it was helpful. If you did, click like and subscribe. If you've got a friend that's getting this, send them the link, share, share the love. Um, thanks for watching. Come and say hello on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter at iPlayRed. See you next time. Bye.